I mean, at that time, yeah. who would you say was the best player that you've... And player with him and against him was Michael Owen, because he just made you... He made your life easy being a midfielder and someone as rapid and his movement as good as that just just makes you look unreal. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Game Day podcast. Today, Jack the Cameraman is joined by Farnham's assistant manager and all-round great guy, Jimmy Hibbert. Jimmy came into non-league from the pro game, having played for Crystal Palace and England schoolboys. Hear more about that, what it was like playing with Michael Owen, and how he first met Paul Johnson, the manager now at Farnham Town. Enjoy. You were looking for my car, weren't you? Yeah. It's in the garage. Morning, Neil. You right, mate? All right. Yeah, good, mate. Morning, sir. You right? Oh, look at that fucking hell. I can't even move to the uh, so this is the legend, legendary motor. Yeah, do you know what? Uh, it has a name. Go on. <laughs> it suits, mate. It yeah. suits. What made you come up with that name? Um, well, I don't really know. I, I, it was something to do with Ferrari. <laughs> right, okay. and, and Enzo yeah. means, I think, pretty sure, I know, Corsa means... Is this means... a legendary uh, truck damage? That, that was from a lorry. Lorry. And then if you come around this side... That was from another car. Wow. And then this you one was from a action. cyclist's head. Hey. That's, that's, that's like a little dent. Shut up. It, no, it actually Good morning, was, we are. No, no, there's this uh, where he crashed into it here and he fell down and uh, scraped his handlebar along there and smashed his head on there. Well, I mean, he's definitely seen some action, mate. Yeah. Probably in the uh, wrong way, but there we go. The engine light is on, but that's been on since I bought it. So 300 quid though. I think Jackson said that is a proper bargain, mate, so well done you. Yeah, you're, you're being safe, man. Huh? Right, you ready? You ready? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this way. Yeah, that's fine, let's go. Stick this in. Stick this uh, in here, mate. So it's a bit, you've uh, got it all nicely cleaned in that. Yeah, well, you know, only the best. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Oh. Oh. Right. There, there is a little bit of room behind this. You want to? No, plenty of room, mate. It's plenty of room. I must admit, when I saw Jackson in this, I thought, "Fuck a deal. I'm going to be struck. <laughs> I'm going to be off on your lap." We do that. Cool. Fuck a deal. No, I don't know it's going to be. Can't struggle to move. <laughs> if I know it's going to be so, I'll have just travelled with my pants. <laughs> oh. cool. Off we go. Off we go. Um, yeah, so welcome to the... Thank you so <laughs> much for... Thank you so much the bumps. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honour. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, all the way back. I oh, know, first of all, let's go... Yeah. Who are you? Who what, am I? What, what, how, how do you... If someone says, give me a little 60 seconds about yourself. Oh, wow. Well, well I'm, I'm Jimmy Hibbert. Oh, James Anthony Hibbert, actually, born 1979. I'm assistant manager of uh, Farnham Town Football Club. Born not far down from the road from here uh, in Ashford. Um, married to my wife Chantelle, been with her sort of 20 plus years. Two beautiful daughters. Um, yeah, had a sort of early stages of my sort of working life, had a sort of career in football. That got cut short in my early 20s and uh, gone back into the real wide world in, ter in terms of work. And uh, yeah, I'm here today, find myself working, running a transport company and alongside that, um, working for this wonderful club of Farnham Town Football Club. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Make it. Good. That's right. Make it. <laughs> um, so on your early kind of career yeah. in football, yeah. I wanted to go back even further than that yeah. with um, what kind of got you into to football do you know what it was uh, I could, as far as I can remember it was all I always had a ball at my feet anyway it was uh, everything linked to my sort of childhood was linked with a ball I think my earliest memory was probably primary uh, second uh, primary school yeah um, this was I must have been I don't know anything between the ages of sort of five to seven something like that and back in, back in the playgrounds where we never used to be, we was never allowed to use a football. It was, it was, they were socks, believe it or not. 
So you, I could always remember, I had no interest in uh, education. It was always waiting for playtime or waiting for PE or something. And we'd sort of rush out and uh, there'd be a, the teacher, there'd always be a teacher in the uh, in the playground and uh, it'd, have a, it'd have a basket of, of socks. And the earliest ones, the, the quicker you could get there, you'd get the bigger set of socks. And, and that's how it sort of started. And uh, they were set, yeah, they were, the, that, that was probably as far as I could go back. And, and they were super fun. It was, uh, yeah, scoring goals against wooden picket fences and stuff like that. It was, yeah, never, never, never a football allowed until we went to, obviously, slightly older school. But it was, uh, yeah. But since then, I think from then, always had a rough idea when you were kicking around with them socks that you, you, you had something there. There was some sort of ability in terms of when you started kicking around with the older kids and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it just it sort of took off from... The love for football was uh, was in them playgrounds. Nice. Mm. Yeah. With the socks. With socks. There must be some, <laughs> someone out there with a really, really big that, is, that sounds really old. No, they just used to wrap them in sock after sock after sock. And then they'd sort of, occasionally, if you're lucky, they'd band it. It was, it was really, really strange. But it was, uh, yeah, they were the earliest memories, kicking socks around in the playground. There you go. Oh. And from there, how do you go from... From there, then it was like, I can remember my dad's taking me down or my parents taking me down to a football club in a random sort of field over sort of Felton Way just down the road. And I absolutely hated it, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know anyone there. I was shocking. Didn't enjoy it. I, I think I lasted about five, ten minutes. Sort of ended up crying and sort of leaving and coming home. And and I think about a month later, I got um, a few friends were playing at a a local football club called Sunbury Celtic and uh, I think a year or so above me and uh, got took down there for a second try and uh, fell in love with it. Yeah, um, 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 unbelievable. It was uh, the sort of the fun days of meeting great people and uh, playing uh, playing with mates and friends and I, I still keep in contact with a lot of them friends today. Even then, what were we talking? Seven, eight years old. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool how support can kind of bring yeah massively and I, th I think I still think it does I think uh, you know uh, when I think when you meet up with friends sort of from the past no one really talks about it, so it was it's always about football football related things and I think with my life especially it's always been based around kicking the ball around so yeah still got some good friends from from them early early memories for, from them from Sunbury Celtic I went on and ended up, ended up started playing for a few I, I sort of was playing in the two years above myself and um, and my dad become the manager, and uh, whether that was a good thing or not, uh, I, I probably not. I think one of my earliest memories with that is we we managed to get to it. We managed to play in a county cup final and for Sunday teams and stuff. That's the biggest uh, if what you can do in your area. And we played um, the final was against a team called Larkspur Rovers, I think, and it was a um, a shithole of. Uh, Loftus Row, QPR's ground. That was for me, mate. That and uh, I can remember playing. I can remember travelling on the bus to the to the ground, and all my dad was in my ear. Oh, you know, you're going to win this game. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And this is so important. And not really understanding how it, just a day for myself was important. And uh, it, I don't know whether it was sort of more for himself it sounds terrible to say, but um, I can remember travelling to that game and 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 being obviously two years younger than a lot of the other players. And feeling this huge amount of pressure, and um, and we had, and I had an absolute stinker. We lost, the, we lost the final seven-one, and uh, I can remember that day so clearly. And it was, it, I felt dreadful. I, I I got shouted at after in terms I'd let everyone down, and I think they were my first sort of learning points and learning curves of how to sort of manage today, and uh, that you take certain points throughout stages of your life. And uh, and you put that and take that as a person and become that sort of that person you want to be when you're sort of giving information to other people and um, yeah that was that was an early that was an early memory a negative one that I've sort of took on board and uh, and learned from and uh, and it's a yeah it's a precious memory really yeah so then. After that, how are you feeling? Were you feeling like I still wanted to play? Yeah, yeah, no, it was I always wanted to play. It was just that was the first shot of um, uh, that. That was the first shot of my life where it was like Jesus Christ, you know what what's going on there, and 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 no one really knew how to 
sort of talk to me after that. I think I went in my sort of shell for a little bit and things happened to our family personally and my parents, uh, my parents split up. And um, from then I'd, so things blossom really quickly. I got I got picked up sort of that season by by Crystal Palace, um, which which I sort of moved on. And within sort of three four years of that, um, I managed to get into into the England squad in the in the England youth setup. And uh, yeah, it was for whatever reason, sort of got left alone and uh, and developed myself and sort of mum and stepfather sort of. Uh, took me to games and uh, just let me be and let me sort of learn uh, and, and educate myself without dictating certain things. And me as a person and, and as a footballer, I blossomed over that sort of four or five year period to then find myself into the, uh, into the England setup of uh, the England schoolboys, which was, uh, so yeah, that, that sort of period, which sort of now skipped a few years up to sort of 14, 15, 16 where I was pretty much, uh, I was built like a man and I was playing some, uh, some of the best football uh, that I could do at, the, at that age. And what, uh, what position did you play? Oh. Uh, I, centre, centre midfield was my sort of favoured position, but uh, I could also get used, uh, I could get used at the back, I could get used, um, uh, I, could play, I could play anywhere across the back really, but my, sort of preferably was, 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 was centre midfielder or sort of holding midfielder really. So that was my sort of favourite position and that's where I ended up sort of playing from the ages of sort of 15 through till uh, through till the when I joined professionally at Crystal Palace. Yeah, so right. I enjoyed it there. So what was your kind of reaction when you uh, got picked up by... Yeah, no, it was more, it sort of got invited down. I knew I was sort of playing well and I was playing obviously a few years above myself, so playing against bigger boys and things like that didn't really phase me. Uh, I was quite a big lump myself anyway. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was just back then uh, when you were a child, it, you, there, you wasn't really thinking much about pressure or anything like that. You just couldn't wait to just get out there and play and uh, the ball at your feet was a, was a good thing, an enjoyable thing. And uh, yeah, it just blossomed through, blossomed through the uh, uh, football, like, like the academy at, uh, at Palace. And um, yeah, that then led on to call-ups for for your country and it was yeah I was sort of around 15 16 I was absolutely sort of flying and I sort of, sort of felt that you were sort of invincible really um, and sort of coming up against them sort of my ages were you sort of John Terry's and your Steven Gerrard's and they were all sort of attending the, the the trials so what actually happens when you you don't actually get selected you they don't just turn around and select you for uh, you you're gonna play for England you go through the southern trials first then that goes on to sort of lay link into the Midlands. Then after that, so they whittle players down, and then you, the South link with the North, and then out of that, they um, they they choose the uh, they choose the England squad. Um, so it's not just oh you've got a call up sort of thing. You have to go uh, and and trial for it. So you're playing in front of you know you're competing with thousands and thousands of of of, of players, uh, and you come across then it was. Uh, from the sort of south, the bigger names that went on to make it, where you saw John Terry's from the north, with the Stephen Gerrards of the world and stuff, and uh, yeah, come across all them as uh, as a young lad, and uh, yeah, no, it was a it was a massive achievement for myself and for my family, and a proud one. And yes, yeah, went went on for that sort of season, of 15s and 16s, and play for playing against, sort of travelling round, uh, lucky enough to travel around Europe and playing at Wembley's and St James's Parks, playing against some good sides um yeah they were real fun enjoyable so you've played with a lot of uh people who kind of yeah on into yeah oh massively it's uh, yeah you, you you come across and that's that's football it's a very fine line of who actually goes on and and you know even if you're peaking at that age um it's a very fine line still even if you're making your debuts at, at first team clubs it's a very fine line to then go on and have a good career but i was full stuff in the early stages yeah come across so many from your Rio Ferdinands to your Joe Coles to your, you know, my Glowins, all them sort of players of that that peak, um, that sort of era. You, you've you've come across someone, whether they're a few years above you or not, and uh, whether it be reserve football, first team football, or youth football. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing uh, some of the players that you think that are not quite good enough to go on and and have good careers, and some that you think oh are pretty much 
nailed on to, to, to make it and, and don't. And that could be a mixture of personal life, injuries, confidence, is, and, that, and that's, that's football. And who would you say is your, I mean, at that time, yeah. who would you say was the best player that you... Well, I was fortunate played? enough, and I, I bark on about it, and the boys give me a bit of stick for it, but Michael Owen playing, playing in that, playing in the early stages I'm talking about, playing through from sort of 15 to 16, 17, and playing with him and against him was Michael Owen, because he just made your, he made your life easy being a midfielder. I say my sort of strengths and my passing, and someone as rapid and his movement as good as that just just makes you look unreal because you just put it into certain areas and and he makes that run for you and you know I lucky enough to have the ability to find that and yeah finishing wise uh, he was he was unreal I think uh, people look back at him now and probably just look more on uh, on his sort of injuries and stuff uh, and his latter part of his career but when you actually dig deep into the early early part of his career it was uh he had an unreal unreal career ended up sort of in Madrid and Newcastle obviously Liverpool and me being a Liverpool fan um yeah he had a really good career and a nice guy as well I did, um speaking of injuries yeah you also had an injury that kind of set you back yeah I, I think um I think when you look at when you look at sort of my career personally it was, uh, I was riddled in the later part, was just constant niggles. Nothing, bar in the last one, nothing real major, but there was always something, roll of an ankle that would take, keep you out for a few months, or, you know, a chip bone in your foot, and just silly little things like that. It was, ne I never had, uh, although I sort of made my debut at Palace re reasonably early, uh, and, and was in and out the squad for, what was, as I was a pro there for probably just under six years. Um, it was a real mixture of, uh, start, stop, start, stop. It was very start, stop. And I put a lot of that down to the earlier years because then nothing was really monitored in terms of the games we played. So I could be playing a typical week for me at, say, 14 years old or, let's say, 15 when I was lucky enough to be in the, in the England squad. I could be playing for my county, my, my district. You could be playing for my school. I can remember a week where I was, I was playing on Sky for for the England school boys on the Friday. I was playing for my school team on the Monday. <laughs> Getting kicked shit out. And it was, uh, and nothing was monitored. I could be playing. Then I played my, for Palace on a Saturday or a Sunday. And then if I wasn't playing on a Sunday, I played for the Sunday team, which, uh, which ended up being the latter stages at Aldershot. So it was, uh, I could be playing four, five, six times a week and no one would sort of, there was no one monitoring. And me as a kid, you just want to play. So I think I felt, the time I got to my sort of early 20s, I felt like a 50 year old man in terms of, I felt battered. Um, and I think that sort of showed in terms of niggles and that, like issues with hamstrings and, and bits and bobs like that. I felt um, I should be flying around like a young whippersnapper and I felt like, a, like I was just about coming to, into retirement. So I think that played a big part. What was the injury that kind of. So got the injury you out? was the. In so the year I left Palace, um, I was injured all that year. I had an issue with my knee. Um, and then I got myself fit. My contract was about to run out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking. So basically I had about two months, two months left of my contract. And basically the club released me at the end of it. It was, uh, I thought I'd uh, have at least another year to sort of get myself fully back fit. Um, and that was the, that was the day with the sort of darker sides of understanding uh, loyalty and a, a real insight into football and how brutal it can be. Um, yeah, so I got released uh, and then I went, Steve Koppel called me straight away and I went to Brentford for six months to get myself fit. And he, he offered me a two year deal there. But then I also got offered to go and play in, uh, in America at the same time. So I had a decision to make whether I went and stayed at Brentford and signed on there or I go out to America. And I'll be honest with you, for what happened with me in uh, what happened to me at Palace, I just felt as I needed a complete break from the UK and, and Dallas sounded really appealing. So I, I went out there and obviously the first day out there training, I, uh, I snapped my Achilles tendon and that was uh, that. Was that. And I, I was about to sign for them this, that, that afternoon. So I arrived in the evening in Dallas, trained the following morning, 
and I was going to sign in the evening at the game, one of their games. And uh, yeah, um, a trialist snapped my Achilles in a tackle. And that was me pretty much uh, pretty much done for, for, a, for a while, which was, uh, yeah, which was, uh, are you going to change gear, Jack? Or are you in I mean, I'm in fifth. Oh <laughs> Jesus, I was still thrilled I was in the Ford One car. Uh, but yeah, no, that was pretty much, uh, that, yeah, that was pretty much me done in terms of playing at that level. I then obviously managed to get myself mobile again and play in non-league. Um, for a while, but it was, uh, in terms of at that level, it, it affected me massively in terms of me as a person and, uh, and, and all of a sudden, all you've known from that early stage of your life, from the age of sort of six, seven through to the, uh, my early twenties, is it was always about football. Yeah. And then it's like, right, shit, what am I gonna do now? And uh, yeah, you're, you're in the, when you're a footballer, you're in this bubble, you're looked after, you're cooked for, your accommodations are sorted out, home and away, and you live in facilities, they look after you, everything is done for you, you, you do nothing. And then all of a sudden I'm, uh, I'm thrown into this uh, so, so-called real world and it's like, fuck, what am I gonna do now? I think, yeah. I think Pat said a similar thing when he was at the academy yeah. and then everything's kind of... Yeah, you're yeah, done, you, you, you literally turn, you, you turn up, you, your, your training kit's ready. You, you turn up and you go, your towels are all done, your, your food's all done, and you, you pretty much come away and you do nothing. You, and then all of a sudden you come out of, come home from training and you're, you're sort of free for it where people are still at work. You've got three, four hours to kill before your mates are either come uh, college, university, or working. And so you're sort of scratching your ass for a bit, to be honest with you. That, that This is then. A lot of teams now do a little bit later in the afternoons and, and, and programs, is it? But we're going back before everything started getting a little bit more sort of serious and technical. But it's, um, yeah, so that, yeah, you, you find yourself in that in that environment of, right, what am I doing now? You know, what do you do now? And uh, that, 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 that was where I was at. You kind of touched on it. So when you came back from America. Yes. You were injured. Injured for, a, I'd say I was out for at least a year. Yeah. I'd, I, I was always a lump, so I ballooned up. I'd, I was uh, I was a horrible, bitter old man for about two years I'd say um in terms I'd say not bitter I was just like I felt sort of that you, when you look back at it you sort of feel sorry for yourself and uh and you think right okay and you, you, you're watching on tv your pal's still playing and and doing their daily thing that they love and you're sort of sitting at home on the sofa still tr trying to figure out your life and what you're going to do and um yeah, it wasn't a great time. It was, uh, I was just, a, I was an angry man um, and, and just felt frustrated, let down. Um, yeah, just feeling sorry for myself. Uh, and that, that was pretty much it. And it, and it, I, I needed to sta snap out of it pretty quick. Otherwise, you know, you know, I'm still, still young and, and lots of things like you could pr pretty much achieve. But um, I just, it just felt like I was in a hole at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So then that kind of, did you start non-league as soon as you were recovering? Yeah, no, I waited for it. Yeah, so I waited for a, a sort of until I could sort of get around. And then weirdly enough, I was living in Ashford at the time in Middlesex. And I knew some, uh, knew some people that were running, um, that were running a football club locally at Ashford and just said, why don't you come down and train? I had a load of mates down there. And it sort of kicked off from there really again in terms of getting back involved in football. Um, and then, uh, yeah, went, went on from there and weirdly enough, I rattled out a sort of, I think at least nearly a hundred odd games, sort of met Jono along the, along the line there. And that's how our relationship sort of started. And uh, yeah, sort of back into, you know, being on that football pitch was, was felt, just felt great, regardless whether you're playing in front of 15, 20,000 or 50 people, you still get the same feeling. Um, you still get the same feeling when you rattle a tackle or you, ping a 40 yard pass or score. The noise is obviously a little bit different, but it's, uh, it's still a good buzz. And uh, yeah, uh, and then since then I've sort of stayed involved within it, yeah. What did you uh, first think of Jono when you, uh, when you met said, him? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, that we, it was weird because we, we didn't realize then that we'd have obviously a more bigger relation, friendship relationship sort of there. But yeah, he was reasonably sort of quiet at the time. And, uh, and then, uh, but yeah, nice enough lad, uh, decent left foot. I think he played on the left, 
I think we used to play a 4 4 2. I played centre midfield. I think he played a lot of these games when I was there uh, on the sort of left side of midfield. But yeah, very, very, very good quality with his left foot. Nice stuff. Lad. Understood the jokes, understood the sort of banter and the fun of it, took it and accepted it and, and all the right things. And yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, it was, I think it was about a season we'd, we played together, uh, give or take then. Um, but yeah, good memories of him. Yeah, can't complain. So how many different non-league clubs did you play for or and then before you went into management? So so I ended up staying at Ashford and I potted around. I'd done a little bit of Nap Hill. Um, little playing? Yeah, playing, yeah, uh, for a seat, just to help a friend out. Potted around and then all of a sudden it just become work took over. All of a sudden the work side become quite busy. And, um, and as a player, it got to a stage then where it was like I couldn't really commit too much. So I decided to have a little bit of a break and I'd, I work side ended up falling into Formula One, which took up a hell of a lot of my time in terms of what I was doing there. Um, I just had a, I just had a, we had our first daughter then, um, Jessica, I think we're going 2006 now. And, um, and I was working for Red Bull Racing and that took me all around the country in terms of what, who I was looking after and what I was doing and um, and decided that football needed to take a little bit of a side shift because I needed to, I had a young child, not a lot of money at the time, uh, obviously coming out of football and still trying to find my feet in, in work um, and that became a priority as much as I didn't want to, I had to sort of come out of out of that for a little bit to, to concentrate on uh, uh, supporting the family, really, yeah. How did you kind of come to that decision? Was it like a no-brainer? It, it was like a no-brainer. Yeah. It was a no-brainer. It was either I, I wasn't my 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 hours at working for Red Bull were taking me from sort of six o'clock in the morning. I wasn't getting into eight o'clock at night, and then you know, so I'm pretty much I'm. And then you try and put football into that. I just never see my my child. You know, it was like that was the more important thing to me at the time. As much as I loved football. Um, I think looking back on it and and missing them days of watching your child grow up would be you know I don't, that just couldn't happen. And so yeah, that that took priority, and um, yeah, and and that needed to all be getting order, which which I, that's what I did. I made that decision to come out of football and uh, and work. <laughs> so then, when did you go back to football? Was that kind of after so the four old... years I spent at Red Bull, uh, uh, four years. So a two. We're now coming into sort of 2010, 11. Um, my, then it had the reverse effect. Everything over that four years, everything had settled. Um, we were sort of back into the swing of, of life, so to speak. And, um, and then my other daughter come along in 2010. And then it was completely opposite. I was doing so many hours at Red Bull and then I wanted to spend more time with my, my daughters again. So it was, uh, I decided to, a, a job change which then brought me back into uh, to, to sort of normal hours and work. And, uh, and then a few years later, I decided to sort of join back into, uh, into football again. What? Did you join back as a player or? No, joined back straight into, basically straight into, I was work, it was weird. It was, it was a guy called Mick Snowden, which is actually uh, Jono's, um, Jono's father-in-law. Um, I saw him one day, um, uh, I, he was sitting in a cafe and I went in to get a bacon roll or something like that and he sort of got talking to me. I don't know him from years back and he told me that he was down at, um, at Bedfont Sports and uh, he was looking for a little bit of help and uh, they, were in a, they were in a place where they needed, uh, just need a new set of eyes on it. And I said, yeah, no, I'll come down and, uh, come down and uh, see what I thought. Come, went and watched a few games. He then inf he said, do you want to get more involved with coaching? And, and I'd done all my badges previously. And um, and I went down there and joined the, the football club of Bedford Sports, yeah. And then am I correct in saying that Jono took over? Correct. From... So what happened then is I spent a year there and then Mick decided that um, it had enough. Uh, I wasn't interested in becoming a manager. By then, Jono had just joined as a player and uh, me knowing Jono, and it just, it was like meant to be, to be honest with you. That, then the, the part, it just all sort of, put yourself together. Jono come in as a, as a player manager. And uh, then I, um, 
and I, and I was the assistant uh, and I'd done the coaching, pretty much what I'm doing now for, for Farnham. And, and that's when uh, our relationship in terms of football, friendship and, uh, and work started, yeah. So he, he was a player manager at Ed So he come across, as, yeah, so he, he, something happened with him at Spellform, he left Spellform, come across as a player first, and then Mick decided he was going to leave. I think there was a very short period where Mick was still in charge, I think. And then um, Jono said, yep, yeah, no, happy to take over. I was happy to stay on and work alongside Jono. And that was our first involvement as, as management, uh, as a management team. A uh, little bit different to now because Jono was then playing. I think he went for a couple of years, a couple of years of, of playing, player managing, and me, me on my own on the side. And uh, yeah, that's when that that's when that relationship started. And you kind of touched on not wanting to be a manager. Yeah. Why is that? Because to me, it seems like you've got the experience. You played under. Yeah, it, it's just managers. it's never really appealed to me. I, I see some of the crap that Jono has to part with on that. And it's just never, I, I, I just, obviously with my work as well, I obviously with work and running that sort of side, I think to run that and the responsibility of, of that, it's just never really, I just, I, I've always enjoyed that in between and uh, having that relationship with the players and and in between that him and Jono, the players and Jono, uh, it, it, just, it just seems to suit and it's something that I've, uh, yeah, maybe, do you know what, maybe in a, a few years it, I might look to say, do you know what, I, when things have settled down on the, on the work side, I, I might think, do you know what, yeah, it was, uh, that, that, that might have built, but it really doesn't at the minute. And uh, that's something that I can't really explain. But it's, um, I think, it, I've been with Jono for so long now in terms of my role, it's, it just becomes the norm and something that I still very much enjoy. And... Um... Who do you kind of have your manager style? Who's that? Who's that for, mate? So the way, it's, mate. So mine, I was lucky enough to work under three or four managers, but two in particular would be Steve Coppel and Terry Venables, and they are both completely the opposite. So uh, Terry was uh, Terry Venables was was more of a, a man management, and and he'd, he'd built great relationships. And for me, that was. He gave me my debut in the Inter-Toto Cup, and the way, the way he spoke to me coming on that day, you'd sort of never forget, just made you feel so relaxed, so good. And uh, he was just a great man manager, um, brought, brought fun to, had this awe about him that he had that sort of fun side, but you knew when he was switched on, you had to listen. So he had that sort of very fine balance of, of fun and, and the serious side. And then the opposite side was Steve Cobble, very knowledgeable man. He done a lot of the coaching, uh, Steve, where uh, Terry Venables didn't, he'd let his guys do it. He was a little bit more hands-on with the football side and, and, and would give you little tips in terms of positional play, touch-wise, where you need to be on, or, or, where you need to be in certain positions on the, on the pitch. So I'd say they were two massive influences for me in terms of the how I would love to sort of style myself as a as a, a manager stroke coach stroke you know uh, assistant manager and uh, sort of a try to adapt you, you take all the even going back to the early stages you take all them things back that sort of old coaches said she had it didn't quite work for me and you're always learning you're you're always learning uh, in terms of who you'd like to be as a as a person uh, an assistant manager and you 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 try and apply them as as much as you can to, to the boys and uh, so far it's it's been a success so you have I mean you have pretty good role models I guess in that in that managerial yeah, space yeah but then it's, it's also finding yourself and who you want to be um, you know when, you, when you're coaching these lads it's um, it, it, sometimes it's not even about football it's just you know just being a sounds a bit corny but just a good good person honest person I like a crack with the boys, so it's finding the right balance. So me, when, we, when we're coaching the boys, it's if they have bad games and stuff like that, it's sometimes it might not even be football related. So you, you know, a lot of I see a lot of managers and you know they're screaming and shouting at players and they're not performing and this. And sometimes you have to put your feet and they're not asking themselves why, why, why are they, why are they not performing? Why is the why have they had a bad game? And sometimes it could be. And if you don't know that individual and you haven't got that relationship with that individual. 
how are you supposed to know? And people just assume it's football. It could be, it could be anything from, you know, that, that person could have lost someone recently or, or something's going on in their home life or work life or personal life. And, you know, and you could be screaming and shouting at that person because they're not, and they can go for a load of shit themselves. So I think as a, a good coach and a, and a good assistant manager, manager, or whatever you want to call yourself, needs to understand their players. Uh, and sometimes it's not all about football as well. Uh, there could be things going on personally, and uh, and that's our job to understand that, help them. If it is football related, help them there. If it isn't, you'd like to be hope that you you know you've got a good enough relationship so they can come to you and say that and explain. And it's as simple as that. I think football gets overcomplicated sometimes, and after time it's because of people are not listening. So uh, yeah, got to be a good ear, mate. There you go. Very nice, nice. Gold dust there <laughs> for any aspiring mm. coaches, man. Well, just listen. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's not even it's not even rocket science. It is, you know, it, you you just got to you're you're, you're a manager. So that doesn't mean just football. You, you you're looking after these boys that are giving up their time, and it's um you know you the the buzz I get out of it is getting the best out of them boys. That is it. You know, understanding what they're good at, what they're not, and when we when me and Jono take take sides and take teams and you've got all these managers they go into the new season and they're like oh i've got this philosophy to do this i want to do that sometimes you can't you have to look at what you get and then work with that and get the best out of that um you know lots of managers want to play out the back you play out the back and we start and then move it around and you can't play out the back if you've got two center halves that are not comfortable with the ball so you can only work with what what you got with we're just fortunate this year of We've identified what we want, and it's probably the first time we can say, you yeah, know, that's the way we'd like to play. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. We have to mix it up, but it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, just, yeah, good fun. Good fun, mate. So you're, yeah, so let's go back. So you're back at, so you're, you're at Bedfont Sport. Yes. Yeah, but how many years, two years there, is it? Two, uh, three? So, so Bedfont Sports, so we were there seven, eight years. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, seven, eight years. It felt like it. I lost all my air there, mate. <laughs> Bedford Spools owed me a new barnet. But it's, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yes, uh, I think it was about seven, eight years in the end. Uh, good years. Um, met some great people. Um, a lot of the people we're working with now, obviously. And, uh, yeah, we, we managed to take them up some divisions and good times. Uh, but then there was obviously got to a stage where, at uh, that particular point, it just felt the right time for us to, for me personally, uh, to, to, to have some time out. And that's what it, that's what I decided to sort of do. And, and Jono thought at the, at the time, it, we just missed out on the playoffs and it got to, we lost a lot of the players. So that, that stage become uh, tough. Then we had to rebuild at the football club. And it just, for us, it just didn't, well, for me, I, I can only talk on my behalf. It didn't feel right. And I, I was, uh, I felt as I just needed a break. This was, after, I think, around October time. Um, I think Jono felt very similar. And uh, we decided to, uh, to, to depart, which was hard, tough, because we spent a lot, a lot of time at the old football club. But we just felt as though it was uh, a time just for, for a break. And, and that's what we did. Except you didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> it lasted two days. Yeah. <laughs> it, it literally lasted two days. It was, um, yeah, the phone... Uh, Personally, when we, we left, I think it, I can remember it very clearly because it was matching my birthday. It was uh, the 30th of October, around that sort of time. And um, yeah, when when the the club that we previously were at put out uh, that, that we were leaving, um, the phone went crazy. And uh, yeah, and one of them being uh, linked with there was a link there with with Farnham. Uh, we had, there was numerous sort of clubs above as well, and. Um, and we just got talking again. And I'll be honest, the way the club sort of sold it and the way we sort of went and spoke and what we'd, we'd, we'd do and it just, it panned out and it just felt, it felt weirdly right. As though you wanted to come and take some time out. It just felt, yeah, weirdly right that that, that was the uh, the next journey, so to speak. And uh, we found ourselves within four or five days, I think it was that quick of a turnaround that we were uh, at the mighty fan of but what made you choose fun? Like, if you said that there was teams above, yeah, it was. It was just. 
there was, there was just something in that meeting that, that Harry was in as well. Uh, we met some of the other committee members and uh, they just saw, saw that the, how passionate they were in terms of where they wanted to go. Obviously at the time, I don't think they were doing particularly great and I think they were getting a lot of criticism left, right, centre. And, uh, but it just felt like the right challenge. Uh, Harry expressed that he wanted to go up the divisions and pretty much obviously explained about this season in particular, what he was going to do, uh, what they were going to do with the ground and stuff. And it, you know, I suppose you hear that a lot, but it did seem quite convincing. And uh, it was one that we were willing to uh, have a good go at. And uh, I think, Jono included, when we put ourselves, we, we, it's like anything, when you, you get set that challenge, uh, you're all in and I'm sort of obsessed with what I do and uh, like this year it's like you know it, it's been unreal and uh, but it's been a lot of hard work and I think probably that's why you saw last week I think it was at the Jersey game just the emotions that poured out of me at the end of the uh, of the game it was just like it was a lot of it was a lot of hard work and uh, really enjoyed that moment with the with with the squad so when you first joined Farnham, yeah, what was your first reaction to what the fuck have we done? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, because it was it wasn't in the place where it was. No, it was, it, was it was a listen. You you, you understand, and uh, I think what didn't do it any didn't do us did us any favour. Sorry, was the squad that was there didn't look too bad, but then they just disappeared. It was like there we go, um, on to the next one, uh, like. The players, it was. I think the, the players that were there at the time were like, "Oh, here we go again, new management, blah blah blah." But all we needed to do was to sit down to a few of them boys and just convince them. I believe if we had time, even if we had a few weeks, just to sit down like this and explain what we're about, what we're going to do, not the club. Uh, the club have got obviously their their aims, but it was more what we'd do as a management team. Uh, but some of them boys that left didn't give us that opportunity to. Some stay for a little bit and then sort of puffed it off, and uh, and for the first, as you as you probably see, for the first sort of two three months, I'd say we were just chopping and changing, getting in what we could just to field a, a eleven. And some of the players worked, some didn't, and then we just sort of slowly found a rhythm in terms of the boys started to understand what we wanted, and. Uh, and then the rest pretty much took off for itself. And I, I think even to this day, since we joined, I don't think we've lost an away game, which when you look at it, it it's just a hell of an achievement uh, for everyone uh, involved, uh, especially when you look at that squad in the early stages. <laughs> how, we had, how we didn't lose away, I don't know. But it was, uh, yeah, it was just patient and it was just getting the fans to understand that we needed a little bit of time. You can't just bring players in and just make it work. And then uh, we managed to seal a couple of players, I think Sh uh, Shams and Flatty being the main two, that were the turning point. And uh, all of a sudden we then went on this uh, this amazing run and then it sort of was a, a good knock on to, to this season. And this season, obviously a lot of uh, money has been thrown into the player side, whereas last season it was a lot of money yeah. off the field. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, yeah, some, people so. like, some people don't like. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it, you need that in a football club. You need that fine balance. You need, uh, and it's very very important to, you know. I think the club made it quite clear at the beginning of the when we first joined that, that they wanted to create an experience. So the, the, there's no good that that needs to come. That facilities need needed to be improved. They have, so it does look good, and it's just got it's sort of gone hand in hand really. The way we ended the season well, they got a lot done off the pitch. And then we were able to add to the to the squad this year, and uh, they've continued to add to the ground, and it's just it's just all falling into place. I think if you probably speak to Harry and the guys and all them boys, that it couldn't have gone any better, really. You know, we've 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 been very very fortunate to be sort of to be backed in terms of the players we want to bring in, and uh, to, to to be able to talk to you now with the record that we've got, it's uh, it, it's something to be very proud of. One thing I was quite curious to know yeah. is how did you come up with the players that you wanted to get this season? Um, we always knew. So when when we joined the club, we, we we had a list of the players that we wanted for that following season. 
um, a lot being the ones that we got. A couple of them we didn't um, at the beginning. Um, and uh, so we, we knew exactly what we wanted. Um, I think one of them we got we got linked with, uh, I think the only one that was we were super lucky with was with, uh, was with Ryan. We didn't know too. We knew of Ryan, of course, but him being close friends with some of the guys at the football club, able to sort of get him in. And uh, so we were very fortunate enough to get him with, and he's been a huge part of uh, the club. He's bought into it and uh, he's been a massive leader for us, which is who is now our sort of captain. But the other guys, we've uh, obviously we'd already got Shams and uh, and uh, Lamar and Flatty in. Then we added with obviously Joe Jackson and Daz being the main, sort of one of the big ones that we were super interested in as well. And uh, and again, lucky another bit of luck was with obviously Owen Dean and Jack being uh, sort of buying into what we what we because he's been a fantastic side. Although sort of speaking to him very briefly via text this morning. He sees has been a little bit stop start, which is a bit frustrating for him, obviously with his injury and then obviously the suspension. So, but it's a massive, a massive signing for us. Um, and uh, and then obviously Guy as well. Guy, Guy, we knew Guy. Guy was a Guy was a, a big target for us, and he obviously bought into it. Unfortunately, he's gone now. But yeah, so we had that going back to it, I'm rabbit on. So going back to it, we did have that core of what we wanted, and fortunate enough, it was just getting. The frustrating thing is, was at the beginning was getting just one over the line. Then it was like a domino effect. Then they all thought, well, okay, this club are being serious. I think a lot of people thought it was all bark at the beginning. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, okay, yeah, they're not going to get them. You know, how are we going to attract them from a step three and all that sort of rubbish? I think one one come and then it opened up a lot of the other boys' eyes and said, well, this club are serious in terms of what they want to do. And uh, and then and then we were fortunate enough that they all sort of all were, all arrived. And it was just the right balance. It was when we were going through, when we were making it, our minds up about who we wanted, it was creating that, not just that decent footballing style on the pitch, was was cre creating that sort of culture off it as well, that sort of togetherness. For me, that's huge. It's 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 just as important as on the pitch. And um, and I believe that, that was, that's been a massive part of our success. Do you think the uh, cup final at the end of last season helped? I think so. I think it opened up people's eyes in terms of the crowds and uh, and that side. I think we had the momentum, the way we sort of fell into that cup final. And I know a few of the signings that that came went to that game. And uh, I think that was a I think that was a massive help. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I think it did. I think what doesn't turn up and you know eight hundred plus and a thousand plus and all them games sort of towards the latter part of the season, the Bagshot League game and all all, all them sort of. They were all a bonus for us, and uh, but that's 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 credit to the club as well of getting them people through the door. So that's not just uh, plaudits to to us on on the pitch. It, it was a it was a massive team effort. So um, yeah, it was good. And uh, so now, obviously, we've we've won the league. Yes. Holy <laughs> shit! So void. Oh no, the GoPro's turned up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Jim! Didn't like Christ. it. Didn't oh, like it. it. You back on? I'll be back on. I'll be good to go. Oh, oh, battery low, Jack. Yes, we know the battery's low. That's why it's on the charge. There you go. We're back yeah. on. <laughs> Get up there! Yeah. Don't the old, the old mother didn't like the dipmits, did it? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! We are back on. <laughs> Yeah, so I was, oh yeah, so now I've just seen myself. I look like Bowser in <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, Jack, go on, mate. Um, on. <laughs> so you've won the league. Yes. Um what is next for step four? Well, I will be honest with you, I, I never look that far. For, for for me it's just let's finish this season. I, I that, I've said that uh, all along. Let's get this over the line. I think Jono's mentioned it and a lot of people have mentioned it, let's try and stay unbeaten, that'd be a massive achievement. And then um, let's enjoy the summer. I think there's a, you know, we obviously got our eyes on a few uh, in terms of there's, there's no doubt that we will strengthen. Uh, the, the club will strengthen. I think that that will that's a, that's a must. Um, and then let's just enjoy enjoy the rest of the season. See where we go. Enjoy our well earned break, and then we go from there. But I think uh, 
in terms of next season, yeah, I think you're probably looking, you know, three or four maybe just to just to strengthen it. Listen, I, I think this club, as we stand now, and this is no disrespect to the squad we've got, this squad we've got, I think, will be hugely competitive in step four. If not, we could potentially go and win it. But I think, like adding Mark towards the end, it just it just spices things up a little bit for the actual squad. People don't get comfortable. It's important to keep moving forward. And if you're if you're sitting in midfield, me and you are sitting in midfield, and we're knowing that there's no pressure on us uh, on the bench from the bench, there needs to be good, healthy, compet competitive players ready to sort of come on, um, and 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 that that's the way it sh should be. And I think the boys that uh, are in that squad will uh, will understand that. And it's just making a, you know, yeah. It's just um, yeah. I think a few added to the squad would would just freshen freshen it up and just make it that little bit more competitive for next year. So I think there's one more question we can get in before we get three <laughs> two. Go on, you got Jeff. Is this still on? It's still going. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, let's finish it off with things that was fairly recent. The Jersey trip. I'm real with it. it was, uh, yeah. It was it like just, it was written. Yeah, it, we didn't want to go on it. I, I spoke to Jono real briefly about it, but it just felt it. That whole build up to it just felt that it was going to happen there, just in a weird way. It was. Um, it just felt right, and I, I think I said it in the interview with you last week. I don't know whether because you, we were still on a buzz from the season before and the way it all ended, and you just naturally think, oh, that's going to happen. But the way it did to be um, to be two 0 down and to sort of claw it back and the way the results all went uh, sort of 15 minutes before us and we knew what we needed to get and uh, oh it's just unreal and it was good that everyone was together including you guys that have done a fantastic job this year it was just nice that we could celebrate with everyone being there yeah. and uh, and I think it was better than there than being on like on a Tuesday night or an away game and all that it was just uh, it just made it feel uh, it just it just set off the season brilliantly mate and uh yeah, I'm not sure what I was doing in them celebrations, mate. I thought I was going to have, a, I thought I was having another stroke, like in 2018. But it was, uh, yeah, that was just emotions pouring out, mate, and uh, and just, uh, yeah, just chuffed, chuffed for everyone that we could all enjoy it together and uh, and enjoy a good night out. Nice. Well, here we are. Here we are in the Farnham Castle. See what today brings. Do a couple of donuts. Well, thank you very much for having me. I've, that's been a very. It's, the journey's gone super quick. Yeah, it has. Yeah. And this is this is. Nice little rise, mate. Yeah, it's a little bit bumpy. Quid well spent, I think. Yeah, you should. You should wait until I see, you see my new car. That I'm going to get. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you get a new one. Yeah. Oh, thank you, mate. Top mail, mate. Yeah, top mail.